Welcome to the Consult Coletti podcast number seven. I'm your host, Anthony Coletti, and today we have an incredible guest, okay? If you are a business owner, a coach, a network marketer, a sales professional, if you have one employee, five employees, 200 employees, our guest today is going to share with you his perspective of over 31 years experience working with local business owners, building teams of dominant salespeople, creating culture of fun, creativity, accountability, excitement, vision, uh, winning month after month after month. So my point is if you wanna learn how to build a culture that is fun, exciting, and a winning team, this is the podcast for you. This is podcast number seven, and let's dive right in. This is the Consult Coletti Podcast. Here's your host, Anthony Coletti. Greg Sirianni, welcome to the podcast. Mr. Coletti, thank you, Anthony. Uh, lucky number seven, man. Number seven <laughs> podcast, I feel honored. That's awesome. Well, we're, I'm so uh, thankful that you took the time out of your very, very busy schedule to do this podcast. I think so many business owners, entrepreneurs, network marketers, salespeople can benefit from learning what you've developed over the last 31 years of your career. Uh, in fact, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'll give you a brief background and then maybe you can share your story. But uh, currently, uh, Greg Sirianni is the regional vice president for Thrive. Thrive is a digital SaaS company that helps small business owners take their business to the next level. It's the end-to-end -end client experience platform. Uh, it's absolutely exciting. You're, you're leading a team of 200 people, and uh, I happen to be on that team. And I can tell you, it is exciting. You're making it so fun for us in the field, and it's just amazing to be a part of it. So could you tell us a little bit about your background uh, maybe uh, even start off with your childhood and and then kind of I know it's kind of a deep dive and then bring okay. us all the way into uh, your current role and and if you could talk about um, how you develop this this uh, system for just keeping it creative and fun and exciting and and winning that'd be super yeah well hey thanks Anthony and uh, look. Uh, it, it's an honor to work with you. Uh, you joined this company and you've done some great things. So um, I'm excited to be part of this podcast. Um, I'm excited that you asked me to participate. And hopefully maybe some of the words that I choose or the stories that I have maybe have some level of influence that can help somebody uh, that might be in a similar position or in a position where they can make change and influence. So for myself, I'm 55, right? I'm 55 years old. I, I feel 30, but I'm 55. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. Um, my parents, my father was 35. My mom was 22. They got married. They had five boys right away. Uh, four of us were born in two years and 10 months. So we are like, you know, they say Irish twins. We're very, very close, all four in diapers at the same time, no twins. And then my youngest brother came out uh, a few years later. And we were raised by a very loving family. Uh, father was first generation. Um, his mother didn't speak English. She's Italian. Uh, his father, you know, did speak English and was born in America. And we were raised by a man that really had a lot of um, a lot of big goals to, to achieve. Um, he, my, my father, my pop had polio as a young boy, so he didn't get a chance to play sports. So his mind, he grew his mind, um, went to college at the age of 26 as a freshman, you know, was a butcher before that. And his parents were upset that he was leaving the butcher business to go to college. Like that's the culture that he kind of pulled himself through, but very disciplined, very focused, um, was a phenomenal jazz guitarist because he couldn't play sports, right? But he taught us the principles. He would always share the story of like repetition of something, anything. Repetition is the mother of learning. You know, if you're going to do something, don't just do your best, but do it right. You know, if your best was kind of like a little bit crooked, then go, go, go back and fix it. Like measure twice, cut once. These are deep rooted core values that my mother and father, you know, have shared with us. And we lost our pop at a young age, by the way. 
Um, my youngest brother was 12. I was just going into 18 years old, my senior year of high school, and he was vanished. He was gone. I passed away. So my mom, at the young age of 42, raised five boys, you know, oh. and, and no, we could have all taken bad paths, but we all kind of found a course because I think we had coaching from our father that was goals are important. Mother, goals are important. Find them, achieve them, uh, try things, be bold. Don't be afraid. You don't have to commit to things that don't work, but don't not try it. Um, and I give my mom credit for having me go on to college because when my father died, I was not going to college. I made a decision. I'm not going to go to school. And she said, just go for one semester. Your father would be proud. If you don't like it, quit. But if you do like it, then you're in. And I loved it. And I went on and graduated and everything else. And um, I think this goal formula that my father had, and he didn't sit down and say, here's your goals, but he was showing us that with goals and purpose, you can achieve things. And, and my mother had us do New Year's resolutions, Anthony, at a very, very young age. Everything from taking out the trash to doing our homework to not fighting. And she was, my mom was creating these skill sets of January, you refresh your year, jumpstart a new vision for yourself. And that carried through in life today. I have goals. I write them down. They're in front of me here. I can show them to you. It's not a secret. I mean, I wrote there, you there you go. Every, every single January, I write hardcore goals down. And then I go through and I'll, I'll highlight some of them. Um, and I, these are in the back of every single book. Like here's from January. Anything that has goals, these are personal, corporate, and financial goals. Anything that's colored has been achieved already. So it was competitive as a young boy with brothers, but I think that growing up in a loving household helped. And I think having parents that maybe didn't come from a whole lot, but they challenge you to just work hard. If you're going to work, work hard and enjoy what you do. And I think I've found some of those skill sets that carried me all the way through to graduating college. My first job was in this industry with a competitive company. Worked there for 26 years, sales rep, account rep, account executive, senior account executive, trainer, you know, recruiter, wow. telephone manager, premise manager, you know, general sales manager. I moved three times, um, was in California for 12 years and landed here over the last six years um, following our president and CEO to this firm. Um, Joe Walsh, who has been a, a true beacon of light and a role model in so many areas, and then getting a chance to line up with him and chief revenue officers like Jim McCusker, who you know, these are real solid guys with real grounded principles um, that just try to, you know, put something out there that is a solution to a problem, and then we go solve it, and that's what we're doing. So... And by the way, real quickly, married, <laughs> woman, same woman, right? For uh, since '91, dated for seven years. I have three beautiful children, uh, 27, 22, and 21. Um, cats, birds, dogs. Had all those as as the kids were growing up. But um, you know, I do make a commitment to things: jobs, my family. I still own my first car that I ever bought when I was 15 years old. It's in the garage right now. It's in the garage right now. Um, so when I get into something, I try to go after it, you know? Yeah, I think, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, mindset. I mean, so your father and your mother, they really developed your mindset or helped you develop your mindset at a young age, core values, right? Measure twice, cut once. I mean, uh, just the coaching from your dad, um, and then all the hard work that you saw them, uh, go through, um, must have been nice as five kids. I mean, it must have been tough, but I'm sure you guys are really close family. Um, so for those, you know, I started the podcast off talking to business owners about you and what you're doing. Um, you're leading a billion dollar company, uh, managing 200 very competitive salespeople um, with a very noble goal of helping small business owners, the backbone of the United States uh, during a pandemic, uh, you know, get to the next level and kind of modernize their business. It's a very noble goal. Um, so 
I want to share with our audience how you're doing this, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind sharing your secrets, because I think so many business owners, uh, maybe they're struggling with developing a winning culture. You know, maybe they're going through employees after employees or their employees' attitudes are poor or their performance is poor, and they just don't know why, you know, and they're struggling to keep the lights on. Um, can you dive into that? And, you know, also, I was kind of going through your YouTube channel last night, and as a video marketer, uh, I love watching videos. I love content marketing, excite exciting videos. So... For those of you that are watching or listening, because uh, we are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, uh, Greg's Greg started. And maybe you, your channel dates back to 2012, and you have some really great content. Uh, so you've been in the video marketing space in terms of motivating your team for eight years. You know, so you're kind of ahead of the curve on that. Uh, can you tell us about that? You know, I, um, this was pre, um, uh, oh, what is it? Work at home. This is, uh, um, communicating when there was brick and mortar offices. So I was trying to find a way once I understood how YouTube worked and you could communicate and attach a link <clears throat> and we were all virtual. That was the word I was looking for before virtual. I would still use this as a tool and a weapon to communicate because I do think Anthony that, you know, leadership, right? Like I'm given a, a, a number to go after and I'm given our purpose, right? That's broadcasted by Joe and his plan. And then my job is to kind of get folks to move in that direction and go solve our objective, go get that riddle done, but not just chase a number. Uh, feel like you're part of something bigger than just an exact number and being part of a culture um, uh, as a leader, being vulnerable. Um, if you watched any of those videos, I would say every one of them were done on one take. I, I don't do editing. You're going to, there's no cutting and splicing. It's like, if I say the wrong word and I often do, it's okay. It's okay. I think people get a kick out of that, but I use it as a way to connect with people. I use it as a way to engage um, and I use it as a way to keep our goal or our purpose top of mind. So I got feedback from those doing them in my earlier days, I guess, when that was, you know, playing with it. And I kind of got comfortable with it. And I do know that it's helpful. And I do like, you know, a minute or two. Most of my videos you'll find, unless it was some grand announcement, there are a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just enough to hold attention. And I think the, the, some of the things that you see and maybe hear from me, Anthony, is I've watched a lot of leaders do things that are the, I, very well. And I've taken their ideas. I've read books and I've kind of really watched how people present and try to mimic their body language and their behavior and their head gestures. And, their, and then all of a sudden it becomes, okay, that's a better way to communicate. You get more people looking. You know, when someone asks a question, if you walk towards them in an audience, they kind of, it feels warmer. And I watch this and then I've seen some managers and leaders do things. I'm like, oh my God, I've been on the, I'll never do that. And I've learned those things. So that piece of communicating is a style to make a connection. If I'm a local business owner, if I'm running another industry, if I'm a leader at some other firm, I would try to find a way to come out of the proverbial office um, and be approachable, be, you know, um, be one of the people. Um, it's a longer road, you know, asking about how people's families are and how their kids are. And I've watched your gardening videos, Anthony, you know, like, and I reference them outside of work. Like I talked to you about that. I, in fact, I flooded my garden last night by accident. I sent a note to Anthony and said, I think I killed all my vegetables. <laughs> I forgot the sprinkler was on for five hours. <laughs> but vulnerability, I think, is right. important because it, it, it shows genuine. And, but you got to keep things fun and light, too. You know, it's easy to send out a report with a number on it and say you're great or you suck. But it's not easy to kind of send a report out and take the time to say, don't forget why we're doing this. We're all in this together. Let's have some fun at it. Um, it's an extra step. I don't think everybody takes um, 
but it's a step that I've watched people take and I'm taking that same path. Yeah. So I want to, I would want to recap on what you just said, cause I totally agree. And if you're building a culture, if you want to build a culture, right. In your organization, uh, in your business, uh, what Greg said was he's given a number, he's given a target to hit, right. But how does he do it in a way that is fun, engaging, exciting and that's really greg i think that's what you're an expert at and you do it in a way that is vulnerable you're putting yourself out there and i think we have a clip of you from 2012 so let, let's just see if we can pull this clip this is one of the videos i was watching last night and this is a i'm going to uh preface this video by saying that i think you were promoting like a challenge to your team and this is the entrance you made during that video. Roll the clip. <laughs> Yo, gang, what's up? In the spirit of our content, look at this. I had to come down to Costa Rica for the weekend. If you take a look, I'm just north of a restaurant called Lola's, and I came here with <laughs> you guys. I'll tell you one thing we got the greatest contest running right now. Look at this. <laughs> so All right, so you get my point, like how how like engaging that is to watch your leader, right, uh, on a surfboard having fun, but also just doing like a quick. That video I think is forty six seconds, Greg. Wow, there you and, go. You know, just to pop in, make a quick video on a surfboard, and 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 you have many. I mean, some of them are on skateboards. I know you were in California for twelve years, so I'm sure this was. Uh, during that time period, but was, yeah. So what I want to explain, you know, what you're doing to in in the culture world, right? Every Monday you have a meeting with your with your sales force. Um, you go through a spreadsheet and you run a contest of the month. It's a themed contest. The themes are absolutely uh, like creative. I think the first one was might have been ride catch the wave. Like right. get a seat at the table. Get a seat at the table. Get a seat at the table. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that was for what? Uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, and the idea is if you if you hit your objective, if you get a sale or whatever that objective is, and then you get you get what at the kitty table, right? And then a, yeah. the next level was you're at the the table, right? And that, then yeah, th that that particular one was if you haven't made a sale which is just new business, right? Like if you okay. haven't gone out and, um, you know, signed up someone to use our software, you know, um, end to end client experience platform. If you haven't done that, you're out on the porch in the cold. <laughs> if you make your first sale, you're at the kitty table. And if you make your second sale, you're at the big boy table, big girl table. And that's kind of the theming that we use for, October, November, December, January, February, March. And we just have a new theme each and every single month. Yeah. It is so clever, right? Because nobody wants to be like out in the cold. And when we see the spreadsheet, nobody wants to be in the red, right? right. So that's every Monday. And then there's, there's uh, you know, accountability, right? We can measure our success as, as a region against other regions, as a team versus other teams. Um, and then you're doing these, I guess these are almost uh, like every other week, these these creative videos that just give the team an update. And you actually send these through the software Thrive in like a text message, um, like a blast to all of your um, your your audience in your in your CRM, okay. uh, which which Thrive you're using Thrive for that. Okay. So um, by doing this, right, we talked about being consistent. You're creating this. Uh, contest this uh expectation uh this competitive um fun atmosphere mm -hmm. and i feel like that's what's lacking in a lot of businesses they don't make it fun right how important is it to make the business fun you know like isn't it everything like why do something if it's not fun yeah well you know it's funny you say that you know i have a brother-in-law that owns a business a uh, very successful business in the Philadelphia area. And any business that has to turn the key every day, uh, a gal that opened up a business, a guy that opened up a business, they're not in Monday morning meetings 
um, showing recognition. And I shouldn't say that many of them aren't in Monday morning meetings, showing recognition, talking about top performers, using client experience, success stories to kind of rebrand our purpose, and then calling out some people that maybe stubbed their toe that month, not in a malicious way, but there's no hiding from the scoreboard. If the visitor has zero on the scoreboard, they don't suppress it because they're going to hurt somebody's feelings. You have to show that the winning team, the home team, had five runs or three touchdowns or whatever you know analogy you want to use. So local businesses, I think, have that same opportunity, Anthony. I think they miss sometimes if they're not treating this like a, a, a jumpstart to the week, refreshing their core values. It could be about a salon, it could be a bakery, it could be a law practice, but reciting what their purpose of intent is to serve their clients, how important a greeting is, how important how they answer that phone, not just in a timely manner, but when a warm, welcoming voice, seeing how they can help. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Even ending every call like that. I think they have to be reminded sometimes to do that. And yes, you can get it from a book. Yes, you can get it from tutorials and videos, maybe something like this one. But I think what makes our region good is that we do communicate favorable and unfavorable news, you know, where no one feels threatened. Um, uh, we recognize top performers and we recognize areas of opportunity. And we do it monthly and we do monthly sprints, but we meet as a group, a whole region, 260 people every Monday morning um, for 35 minutes, by the way, not for an hour, 35 minutes, 35 minutes. It's called a cup of coffee and we get a chance to repurpose ourselves and make sure that that compass, that bearing, that waypoint that we set that we're on course for. And Anthony, one last thing I'll add is that whether it's our industry or any industry, when you run by a quarter or you run by an annual number, you can often hear things like this. I'll be there in the end. I know I had a bad month. You know, I'll be there in the, I know I had two bad months, but I'll, I'm going to get there, coach. I want to be there. But if you go three or four months and you're, you're banking on someone coming in with a, with a load of whatever services you provide, trust me, more than likely it won't happen. So if you shorten the focus, create a little bit of energy around it and maybe market it inside your own company, which we do in our region, we market it. Anthony, it's funny that you showed the surfing video because our theme this month is ride the wave. You're either wet, you're either waxing your board on the beach you're either paddling out or you're on the party wave, you know, um, and that's kind of the progression. And we have loads of people halfway through the month already succeeding way past their objective because I got people saying to me, can we ride a really big wave now? Or can we hang 10? Like they want to go further. So I don't know how you, you, you drive that message home about clarity, simplicity, purpose. Maybe you're in an industry where you don't have goals like quarterly or monthly, but you have purpose, how you serve your clients. You care about how people are greeted. You care about showing up on time. You care about, you care about leaving a house or a home or a business nicer than when you got there. So if you do work, you're cleaning up after yourself. If you're providing a service, you're sending a thank you and an email and a communication. It's just, it's so fundamentally basic to me. We're trying to use our platform, our end-to-end -end client experience platform. We're trying to get business owners to apply similar thinking in these 7, 10, 15, 20, 30 employee, 50 employee business operations. And guess what, Anthony, it's working. Our product's the perfect product at the perfect time where the, the world's fractured right now with this COVID and we're helping, we're helping, you know, people get jobs. We're helping people manage their jobs. We're helping people get credit for their jobs. I mean, it, 
it's a great weapon, but you have to remind, I think, the people you work with of what your cause is. And our cause is preserving and giving business owners a competitive edge against big, big monopolies or big regional players. Um, and I love it. I have to tell you that I get fulfilling out of it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I just hit my one year mark with Thrive on July 15th. Uh, thank you. And uh, just looking back on the culture within Thrive, it's been absolutely great. And and the software itself is just constantly improving and optimizing. So that that's a really good sign. Um, so we're having a lot of fun here. Uh, I think it's important to just recap what you just said about um, staying focused, clarity of purpose, um, the simple things, the fundamental things, how you pick up the phone, right? Um, you know, this is all about customer experience, right? So what the software does is it saves business owners time uh, because we can automate a lot of the things that they don't have time to do, like social media, um, email communication, uh, text message communication, many of the things that the big brands are doing, small business owners don't know how to do it or they they don't have time to do it. So yeah. that's one part of the customer experience, right? The the part of the customer experience that, that you're also talking about is kind of the non-tangibles. It's, it's, it's the culture, right? It, it's the greeting. It's, it's everything that they really do have so much control over if they only got really intentional about it, right? And reminded about how important it is. So uh, I'm reminded of uh, another one of my friends, Charlie Billard. He built a tremendous corporation, a printing company, and he's written two books. He went to MIT, Harvard Business School. He's gonna be on in a further episode, but his, he has a very, very similar philosophy in that business has to be fun. You have to be very clear on your goals and you have to systematize a lot of it right? You have to make it into a game. And I want to play one more clip for you, or maybe two, but I think this is, uh, let's, let's dig through your archive. This was a contest, Greg, that you did where um, people were, 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 were making sales and you put all their names into a, a basket. Look at your entrance here. Anyone I think this is Greg? awesome. Greg? <laughs> Greg? This is back in the brick and mortar days. I'm back. Dude, I'm back. this is this is eight years ago. I mean, this is I'm taking notes off this video. And then here's what you do. Every sale you made. You're just creating this fun. Erica, Erica, Lori, Zoshi, Jim, Archie, Zach. And what you did is you put it in a a, a basket, and then you're you're raffling off like a, a prize. But th this is why you're you know one of the reasons, Greg. This is why you're having so much uh, success, I think, is because you're not afraid to try new things. Uh, you're not afraid to put yourself out there. And, you know, I just have so much fun participating and watching, um, you know, the theme of the month, right? The monthly goal. And let's talk about like where the rubber meets the road. I mean, our company has had like record breaking months, right? I mean, and you're leading the charge. You are creating, I mean, obviously right product, right time, but this culture that you're creating is having a massive impact. And what I really want business owners, entrepreneurs to understand is they got to be, they cannot afford to not implement some of these practices. You know, the weekly meetings, the contests, the video marketing. I mean, all this is about attention, fun, excitement. And you said, you said one of the best things uh, I've heard um, is that people want to be a part of something bigger, right? More than just a number, people want to be a part of, of, of a winning culture of something bigger than themselves, right? So if you're, like you said, a butcher or a dry cleaner or a nail salon or whatever it is, I mean, this is really what I'm hoping that you take away from Greg today because he is a master at this and, you know, from, from experience working for him, uh, you know, it's, it's even taken my game to a whole nother level, uh, as, cause I am obviously a, a competitive person, but it, you've made it fun and competitive and you know, what, what better, uh, 
you know, environment is there to work in, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll say this first, a couple of things you said there. Um, we do try to keep it fun. Um, you don't work for me, right? You said I work for you. You don't, you, you work for yourself. Um, you know, uh, my job is to knock down the debris, you know, as the leaders to just make sure stuff's not in your way and simple. Well, we, we appreciate that very much. You know, like even this podcast, um, you know, thrive gives us so much freedom as business advisors, as consultants for the small business owner to, uh, to really, like you said, like just go out there and, and build your own, uh, empire, your own franchise. So I appreciate that. But, uh, I, I like, I like working with you. I'll say that. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Thank you, Anthony. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm part of Coletti's corner here and <laughs> you know, part of this, you know, podcast, but you know, my father going back to my pop, right. And it's, I work with great mentors and leaders along the way in my career, but my father made a very profound impression on, on all his sons and um, my mother as well. My mom's with us today and she's really a beautiful woman and so loving and never lost a beat, you know, through her own tragedies, right? Um, but I will say my father always said, be your own boss, you know, be your own boss. And this selling, being a part of this organization Thrive has led me as close as I could get to becoming my own entrepreneur. There is you know, you do get latitude, but you're accountable to your results. Right, Anthony? Right. So the, being in sales or being in a service industry where you're doing that, you really are an entrepreneur of yourself. Maybe you didn't take a loan. Maybe you didn't sign your mortgage away. I have tremendous respect for the ladies and gentlemen that do that. But business owner mindset is 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 taking a risk, right? So I think that when you're building some of these cultures and you're doing some of the things that like you showed all those videos, I, I can't believe they're even all mine. I mean, it's, it's, it's wild. The reason I do the little teeny things like those names is because if I pulled the name out of hat and I said, Anthony Coletti won, there'd be 33% of the people that would say that was rigged. It just happens. It mm -hmm. just happens. So now I pissed off a third of my people. But when you do it where it's like you put everybody in, you show them everything, you never let the box leave the screen, you pull the name out, it's as authentic as it can get. And as a business owner, the, what I would be doing and thinking about doing is trying to find a way today, on Monday, tomorrow, the next meeting yet. If you haven't had a meeting, have a meeting. And bring everybody back to that ribbon cutting ceremony when you turned the key and you made your first call or you serviced your first client and remind them what your purpose was and what you were trying to build, not what you've become, what you've been trying to build. And it will reset maybe some of the things that were so critically important to win that first client or two over that maybe you kind of forgot to do over the last couple of weeks. You're not afraid to drive your truck on the lawn, you know, uh, and you pull it back. You would never do that when you were brand new. You wouldn't dare enter your market in a truck that wasn't clean and shiny. And today we have trucks on the road that you're thinking like, seriously, like that guy's going to come do my thing. People that own beauty salons, when they first opened up, the plants were nice. The windows were clean. There was no cigarette butts. There was no gum. They used to actually power wash the walkway. Now you walk in and you're like, does this guy even see the weeds? Like if you just get into this routine of a pile of laundry in the corner as a business owner, you just kind of wind up stepping over and you never see it. But a moment a guest comes over, the first thing they notice is a pile of laundry. Like this philosophy of, you never go back to 1983, go to my high school yearbook. You know what it says? You net my quote, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Dad, that's my father's language. You know, he just every shake somebody, look them in the eye, put your hand out, firm handshake. Like don't be a slop card, but are we making great impressions at our storefront? Are we making great impressions every time our phone is answered? You know, without getting, you know, company advocate here, but my company, 
you know, our platform actually allows you to actually listen to every call that took place. You can hear how your phones are being answered. Yeah, you know, you don't think go riddling through it, but you can actually hear if people are saying, hey, thank you so much for calling Cletty Salon. I really appreciate you reaching out. How can I help you? Versus hello. Yeah. yeah no, 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 we got spot. Like we hear oh, them. Brutal. Yeah. And the poor business owner, if you just knew that, like you got the name on the shingle, <laughs> if you knew how your phones were being answered, you either be thrilled or horrified. There's not a lot in the middle. It's just really good or just really bad. And there's no gray area for having an impression being made. So um, using some of the things that I use with this company are things I've learned, these little sprints, you know, recognition, creating purpose, reminding, going back to repetition is the mother of learning. Joe Walsh, our president, CEO, uses the language of another coat of paint. Put another layer of paint on it. Put another layer of paint on it. Uh, no matter what your message is, it's a third of the people hear it and get it. The next third were kind of paying attention. The other third really weren't. So then you say it again the next week. And the first group says, didn't Greg just say that last week? And the other group goes, boy, that kind of sounds familiar. And then the third group's like, I can't wait to get out of this meeting. <laughs> and then you do it again the following week. And the first group is like, my God, when is he going to stop talking about this? And then the second group says, God, I get it. I understand. <laughs> and then the third group goes, boy, that sounds familiar. And then by the time you get your third or fourth layer of paint on the same message, this isn't check off the box, keep throwing stuff at people. Same message, consistent message. Be predictable, be consistent. That's where you get a team rally cry and people understand what their purpose is. I don't know if that helps or not, Anthony, but it's where my brain's taking me anyway. I just hope people get it. Um, it's, it's true across all businesses whether you're a coach, whether you have a brick and mortar, a digital business, whether you uh, are a network marketer, a repetition is the mother of learning. And I learned this. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to Kevin White at the, in our training department. He was, okay. he was on a, a previous podcast. Um, Kev, Kev really hammered that home in training about repetition. Okay. And then I have another mentor, Kirk Haran, who uh, was a retired firefighter. Um, he's done very well in network marketing. And we would listen to Kirk's story uh, over and over and over and over and over. And you know what? Like three years in, Greg, yeah. listening to this story, I would still grab nuggets off of the story. That's so, great. You know, to so so your your main theme right there was reset your purpose and be um, consistent, right? Reset your purpose. So if you're a business owner and it's been a while since you actually had a meeting with your staff, reset your purpose. Look around. Look at the sidewalk. Look at the way you're answering your phones and, and let's reset everything. OK, now that that's like an internal leader manager role. Let's just switch gears. And I know we're running out of time. Let's switch gears to what software can do for business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been fascinated with the impact that I'm having in the field with business owners, uh, getting their online presence completely cleaned up, listing their name, address, and phone number on 60 plus directory websites, using software to post uh, relevant keywords and posts into Google My Business, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Every day using the software, our software has over half a million pre-made posts available to business owners in really helping them dominate uh, and streamline a lot of these processes that they don't even know. They don't know what they don't know. They don't even know that, that Google is so important. Nine out of 10 people use Google to search for businesses. And if you're not on there, I mean, you're missing call volume. Now that's the free way. But we have the paid way, which you were referring to, which is Thrive Leads, which is an artificial intelligence machine learning uh, system that records the phone call. So you can actually listen to them. And we, we actually give you a certain number. So it's like dollars in, phone calls out, right? They spend money, they get phone calls. 
and then they could actually listen to these phone calls. So software going in, I mean, we're using software right now. Many people are using Zoom. This is StreamYard, another software. We use Loom, Vidyard, uh, Thrive every day. I mean, there's if you're not using a software, QuickBooks, right? Like, you know, you need an expert in software. You need a business advisor. That's essentially what Thrive is doing, what we're doing with business owners. Can you talk a little bit about that for us? Well, it comes down to uh, trusting somebody, right? You have to trust somebody at some point in time um, with a helping hand. Uh, the, the climate and the, the, um, the platforms that business owners used in the 80s and 90s, um, the ability to kind of take an invoice and stick it over top of the nail on your counter, um, and then hope the client comes back again. I mean, there's businesses that exist like that. I know that. And they're, some of them are probably successful. Um, but will they carry the next generation? Uh, most businesses maybe have evolved is probably the best word to use. And when you are putting your life on the line, we have shifted in the 80s and 90s um, from you're going to do business and really early 2000, you're going to do business the way my business does business. These are my hours. These are when I'm, I'm open. This is how I invoice you. You will pay the bill. You know, uh, this is how I put an estimate out there. I hope you like it. Um, that has evolved to now business owners having to do business in a way that's convenient for the consumer. And you have to be a business that's willing to evolve to satisfy a client like myself or a client like Anthony, where I maybe don't want to talk to somebody. And I would like to do a little bit of chat online first before we go on our first date. Maybe I'd like to do a little bit of a Zoom meeting or some kind of video conference before I go on a first date. Maybe I want to learn a little bit about your business before I even talk to you, find out what your history was. What is your purpose? Read some of your reviews, look up Google my business. I mean, you have to get to a point where if you're not satisfying the way people's con people consume information and make choices, then you're only dealing with a small little sliver of the pie now. Cause every year those people get older and they're getting more sophisticated in how they actually choose or continue to patronize a client. So this is an evolution and our purpose thrive. Our goal is matching what the product is looking to service or sell in the way the consumer wants to do business. And those two things are now converging and coming together. And we're providing a platform for that. If you don't, if you have one little thing that you think is automated, that's not really software. That's just one little thing you think is automated. That's like having a calculator on your desk. It doesn't mean it's that sophisticated. Yes, it's a piece of technology, but it's not going to help you run your business into the future. So what Thrive does is we actually go out and talk to businesses that have a desire and a need or uncover that need that says you got to communicate better. You know, you know, when I leave my dentist, they do send me a reminder that says, hey, your appointment's tomorrow. Like, shouldn't that be happening for a salon owner? Shouldn't that be happening if I have an appointment with my attorney? Shouldn't that be happening for my accountant that uh, reminds me that the extension went to July 15th, your birthday, by the way? You know, shouldn't that be happening for the daycare center, letting people know what their measurement is now? Um, with COVID being involved and having children hopefully coming in by September, isn't there some form of communication that people can be doing real time so that their clients don't get lured away mm. by a competitor? Because trust me, those competitors are sending out communications, trying to cover a broader area, trying to bring in three or four clients because they lost three or four. So trust is huge. There's companies that offer services and provide platforms, but you know, I would look at how many clients they have, not whether they had a good review or a bad review. Most people can look past that, but do that review based upon their client base. How many clients do they have? You know, 
Um, I would study, you know, what people say about them. Um, and I would interview a lot of people, but we're bringing my company. What Anthony does is we bring really intelligent software to the local business owner that doesn't have to buy it anymore. It's in the cloud. They can do it from their phone. They can do it from a desktop, but they don't have to purchase the software. They don't have to go out and invent it. Um, we've all been on planes. If you have enough money, you can buy a plane. But if you want to get to Los Angeles, you get a seat for 289 one way, 289. Like, why would I spend a billion dollars on a plane when I can just get the software and pay a little fractional portion of it that a lot of other people can help leverage and drive that cost down? That's what we do. I don't know if that makes sense, Anthony, but um, it's our purpose is to preserve and give the business owner a fighting chance to compete with companies that are using this kind of technology because they have deep pockets. Some of them invented it themselves, I'm sure. Right. I'm talking about big regional players, you know. 30, 40, 50, $100 million players. They're in our backyard. And then you got the national guys doing it all. And then you got me trying to run a business and I'm trying to compete. I better have a weapon that never closes at the moment the sign on my door says five o'clock. My business stays open. And that's what we provide. That's a very timely message. I, I uh, definitely encourage everyone to re-listen to this podcast because uh, there's a lot of knowledge being dropped right here. 31 years of experience working with tens of thousands. I can only imagine how many business owners do you think you've, you've touched in 31 years? Tens of thousands. Uh, you've seen, you know, like you said, the 90s, the early 2000s. Now we're in 2020. Um, you've seen the evolution of, and you mentioned how the customers want to do business, right? how the customers want to do business. You've seen the evolution. So um, I've never heard it put that way that instead of buying the software, like actually developing it, you like a plane, you, you grab a seat. So it brings the whole cost down. That was incredible. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And many business owners are, are, are familiar with that. So um, yeah, I, I just want to say uh, to everybody listening, watching, take your business to the next level. It is so important now especially with COVID-19, what's going on with this election, like so many distractions. You're a business owner. If you're watching this, like we're here to help you. You know, it's your kids, it's your retirement, it's your future, it's your dreams and aspirations. We have the resources to help you. So if you'd like more information, you could visit my website, which is consultcoletti.com. I'd be happy to give you a demo of Thrive. If you're working with another Thrive business advisor, they, if they're, if you're watching this video, if they sent it to you, feel free to reach out to them. They're very qualified. And Greg, um, any last closing wor words or remarks? I want to thank you again for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to do this podcast. Hey, Anthony, it was, a, it was an honor um, to be on this. I really appreciate it. Uh, volume number seven, uh, lucky seven. I feel honored to be there. It's a pleasure working with you. I, I'm glad I got a chance to voice some of my thoughts to your audience. And it's a growing audience. I love it. And uh, I'll be honest, um, uh, maybe this was more enjoyable for me than for you, but uh, let's get back to work. Thank you. Absolutely. Guys, make sure you like and uh, subscribe to this podcast. You can subscribe on YouTube. Uh, you, can, you can watch on consultclady.com. You can go to Apple Podcasts, uh, Google, uh, Spotify, and share this with a business owner. If you've got a, a neighbor, a friend, um, you know, a family member that owns a business, do them a favor and share this with them so they could uh, speak to consultants. You know, I've been in marketing for 15 years. You've been in for 31 years. You know, we have, we're here to help. All right. So if you could do that, that'd be super. Leave a comment. Let me know you enjoyed this podcast. And uh, Greg, I will see you on in the, uh, <laughs> in the other virtual world. <laughs> all right. Take care. Thanks again. All right. Thanks. Cheers.